Get in the zone by understanding how we as teachers can implement a concept known as the zone of proximal development. Today, we'll talk about research developed by Russian psychologist Lev Vygotsky and consider how the zone of proximal development can be implemented in classical Christian classrooms. Hi, I'm Patrick Egan with Educational Renaissance, where we are promoting a rebirth of ancient wisdom for the modern era. In my latest blog on the Educational Renaissance website, I develop some ideas about Russian psychologist Lev Vygotsky, who made significant breakthroughs in our understanding of cognitive development almost 100 years ago today. In this video, I'll walk us through some of Vygotsky's theories and we'll consider how his theory relates to our educational renewal movement today. We'll also learn about some tools we can use to optimize learning in our classrooms. Stick around to the end where I'll share some additional thoughts not included in the blog post. We begin by looking at Lev Vygotsky. Who was he and what was the nature of his work? Lev Vygotsky was born in 1896, the same year as Jean Piaget, who I covered in the previous article in this series. For most of his life, Vygotsky lived and worked in Moscow, particularly during the 1920s and the 1930s. Inspired by his groundbreaking work, a group of students gathered around Vygotsky, known as the Vygotsky Circle which included the prominent psychologist Alexander Luria. Vygotsky died at the young age of 37, but left behind a significant body of work in the area of childhood cognitive development. There are three intersecting concepts that are central to Vygotsky's work. First, Vygotsky studied how children learn languages and noted that language is a tool used by children to connect them with other people in their social world. Second, Vygotsky saw how the individual develops holistically within a sociocultural environment. As human beings, we develop first on a social level and then on an individual level. Third, Vygotsky flipped the prevailing model of cognitive development. The predominant theory was that development precedes learning. What Vygotsky understood was that learning actually precedes development. What this means is that children are capable of learning concepts and skills before they reach developmental milestones. These three concepts come together in what Vygotsky formulates as the zone of proximal development. A child grows through an appropriate level of challenge under the influence of a more knowledgeable other. Too little challenge and the, the child grows bored. Too much challenge and the child grows frustrated. But a child who is guided through an appropriate level of challenge by a faithful guide can achieve tremendous cognitive growth. This helps us understand children as people with vast potential who are currently in the state of formation. As Vygotsky says, they are beginning to mature and develop. To get to that new level of maturity and development, they need enough support from a grown-up to work through the problems that will help them acquire new knowledge and skills. The ultimate end on the part of the learner is independence. What this means for us as teachers is that we are providing enough support to enable children to do what they cannot currently do, but will soon be able to do on their own. The learner then moves on to the next concept or skill that they cannot do on their own and repeat that move toward independence. In my article, I highlight the concept of retrieval practice as an approach that maximizes appropriate challenge aimed at the independence of the learner. In retrieval practice, the mind is called upon to retrieve something from memory 
after an amount of time has elapsed. This approach uses spaced or interleaved practice as opposed to massed practice that tries to burn into memory a concept or skill. You actually allow a student to get a little rusty before practicing again. This produces long-lasting learning to occur by reinforcing neural pathways. Another method that maximizes challenge for the learner is narration. By retelling what was read, seen, or heard, the student actively participates in assimilating new knowledge. You can learn more about narration in Jason Barney's book, A Classical Guide to Narration. There are many techniques you can use from Doug Lamov's Teach Like a Champion that capitalize on the zone of proximal development. Colby Atchison has produced an ebook on how to implement Teach Like a Champion in the classical classroom. You can find both of these resources on the Educational Renaissance website. As I mentioned, I wanted to share with you one more concept from Lev Vygotsky that I wasn't able to include in my blog article, and that's the concept of attention. Vygotsky found that attention was the most important of the major functions of mind that ought to be developed in childhood. A child that has mastery over attention is able to move more fluently through stages of development. What does this mean for us as parents and teachers? It means that as we are working with our children, we know that attention work is of the utmost importance. Pay attention to where the eyes are. Help students to know that single tasking is way more important than multitasking. Help your children to bring their attention back over and over again to develop that skill of attention. Here at Educational Renaissance, we are promoting a rebirth of ancient wisdom for the modern era. If you'd like to stay up to date on new videos, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also listen to our podcast through any of the many podcast platforms. Just look for the Educational Renaissance Podcast. Every week, you can find new articles and resources published at educationalrenaissance.com. Well, thanks for listening. We'll see you again.